There's actually an RFC that describes how to propagate the validation state between IBGP speakers. RFC 1897 defines an opaque extended BGP community. It has three values mapping onto the three validation states, valid, not found, and invalid. These extended communities can be used in IBGP to allow distribution of validation state along with the prefix if desired. On Cisco IOS, to enable this, we need to, again, per address family, do neighbor, the neighbor address, announce RPKI state. And this will pass on the RPKI state to the next router. For Junos, there's no such built-in support. If you want to propagate the validation state, you need to explicitly configure this policy. And using these opaque extended communities, which is one option, or as many operators have been doing prior to RFC 8097, defining their own internal communities to do this. Now, there are two important caveats when propagating validation state. The first one is interoperability. Is the defined opaque extended community supported in all vendor equipment in a multi-vendor network? Until recently, Junos would not allow the required opaque extended communities to be configured at the command line. And the second issue is Cisco's iOS and Cisco iOS XE behavior. iOS adds a step to the best path selection algorithm checking validation state. And it checks this validation state before checking local preference. And this check prefers valid over not found. So let's have a look at these. In Junos, the opaque extended community was only supported for most recent Junos releases, as shown on the slide. So we now can configure these as policy options, and it means that interoperability between Cisco IOS and Juniper routers is possible using these three opaque extended communities. So check with Juniper if you need an updated Junos release to be able to support this. With the support now in place, we can now set policy to detect these communities being sent from Cisco IOS or IOS XE routers. Again, under policy options, we do the configuration as shown on the slide. We look for community RPKI invalid, which we've already defined, and then we can set the validation state in the BGP table. Likewise, for invalid and for unknown, and then we can implement our other incoming policies as well. Then we'll look at the second instance, the second caveat, and that is propagating validation state in iOS. For example, a prefix may be learned via two paths, via two separate eBGP speaking routers. So you have these two routers in your network. They talk to the core by iBGP, but they learn path to a destination via two different directions. The slide shows an example from this from the routing security workshop that NSRC offers. These three prefixes have two different paths to get to them. One path is through a direct peer. The other one is through the transit provider. In this case, one eBGP speaking router talks with a validator. The other eBGP speaking router does not, due to error or design, mistyping, whatever may have gone wrong. The core router sees these two paths, and the best path selection process prefers the valid path over the not found, even though the not found path has a higher local preference than the valid path. For example, and this was the case demonstrated in this workshop, the immediate direct peering was across an internet exchange point, whereas the valid path was visible only through a transit provider. In this case, it was the peering route that lost its session with the validator, leaving only the border router talking to the upstream provider. The border router saw the prefix was valid, forwarded that on to the core. The peering router had state not found and passed that one on to the core. Best path selection saw that the valid path via the transit provider was preferred over the not found peering path. This could have a pretty serious consequence, 
given the volume of traffic that's currently moving between networks over peering links. So carrying on with this example, looking at the path detail, we see the two routing entries. We see one path, RPKI state valid, best path even though local pref is 50. And we see the other path, state not found, not chosen, even though the local preference is 200. So do we want to actually propagate validation state? Operators need to think if this is really desired. Current standard practice I've seen in most implementations has been that only the eBGP speaking routers have a session with two diverse and redundant validators. As I was mentioning earlier, geographically separate and using both IPv4 and IPv6, if possible. We want to check the validation state on eBGP speaking routers. We want to drop invalids on these eBGP speaking routers and distribute the remaining prefixes by IBGP. By remaining prefixes, I mean the valids and the not founds. And we want to avoid propagating validation state, at least in Cisco IOS, or make sure that eBGP speaking routers never lose the connectivity to the validators. So there needs to be a little bit of care in doing the network design and ensuring that we have appropriate redundancy in place, as we do for many, many other aspects of a network. 